you know what this is. You can very clearly see a papillary mucosal pattern. You can see a lot of very edematous submucosa. You can see smooth muscle within the wall of this organ. And in addition, even out here, even though there are some infiltrates of uh, chronic inflammatory cells or lymphoid tissue beyond the muscular layer within the uh, serosa, we can recognize this as being bowel. Here are some circular muscle layers. Here are some longitudinal muscle layers. Here's the mucosa. Here is the uh, villi of the mucosa. Because we are calling this villi and the fact that we have the full length of uh, outer longitudinal muscle, we know that this has to be small bowel rather than large bowel. Here are the villi, here's the epithelium, here's the lamina propria, here's where you have your loose connective tissue and lacteals, here is the thin layer of muscularis mucosae, here is the very, very loose edematous vascular submucosa, and then here's the circular muscle, and here's the longitudinal muscle. Um, perhaps this may very well be the uh, some of the adventitia or serosa over here. The only thing I want to point out, however, in this is that normally the submucosa of any GI organ is loose connective tissue. In this area, not only is it loose by virtue of the fact that it has an areolar type of connective tissue and kind of spongy blood vessels, which you see out here, it is more than loose. It's edematous. And, uh, even though uh, edema is a very nonspecific finding in disease due to a variety of etiologies, I think we can safely say that there is a very significant amount of fluid within the lamina propria of this small bowel. And you don't appreciate it as much from the mucosa, the muscularis, or the serosa. This is a very edematous small bowel, chiefly submucosa. Thank you very much.